Hello, hello, and God bless you, family. And welcome, my new friends. We'd like to welcome you here to Heart to Heart at a Hope International YouTube Church. I'm your pastor, Zarina. You can call me Pastor Z. And this is my trusty companion. I like to call him Deacon Teddy. Deacon Teddy, would you like to bless the, the congregation before I talk to them? Okay, here we go. Dear Lord, let this message today show your heart to the people that are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, baby. You're such a good boy. He's such a good boy. He's always with me, so I have to let you see him. There you go. Well, family, it's been a while, I know, and I apologize for that. But there's a reason for that. I've been through some challenging things. I have recently lost two of my loved ones in a matter of like less than two weeks apart. And each one, both of them were surprises. One was my sister. We didn't even know she was sick. She didn't know either. And something happened, I think a swelling in her arm and took it to the doctor, found out she had a blood clot, but also that she had cancer. Yeah, and then after she checked in the hospital, everything just fell apart. Then she had a stroke and, and she got pneumonia. So you just find out and then within the time you find out your loved one is sick, three weeks they're gone. Yeah. And then my daughter, she's my spiritual daughter, but she's my daughter. God, God gave it to me and I love her like she came from my womb. Pastor Pamela, they called her Pastor P. She died tragically in a car accident after preaching in a car accident um, a day and a half after I got back from being at my sister's side. I was able to, praise God, I was able to be there by my sister's side and pray with her and take care of her in the hospital. I was in the hospital, I was on the night shift and to make sure that she had a relationship with, with God through Jesus Christ and that Jesus was her Lord and Savior. And yes, it's done. So thank the Lord. You know, and I'm making this message because so many Christians were saying, I don't know why God did this, you know. He has his reason, you know. I mean, but we just have to trust him and, you know, say God is good anyway. You know what? That's crazy. That was not good. In no form or shape was that good. And God did not do that. God did not kill my sister. God did not give her cancer. God did not make her have a blood clot. God did not give her pneumonia or a stroke. Where do, this is terrible, terrible teaching. It's traditions of men. It is not the doctrine. It's not the Bible. It's not the word of God. And my daughter in Africa. So what? God killed her in a car accident? No. Beloved, no. 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 And that's the problem. And that's why a lot of people don't like our God because we're telling them these foolish things. This is bad teaching. Some good teachers in their time have done some really, really bad teaching and it's going on and on and on. I mean, not one person, not two persons. I mean, everybody, and they seem like they would get upset when I say God didn't do that. God did not do that. But see, that goes back to that, that doctrine, God is in complete control of everything. You know, I take them back to Genesis 1 26. I'll keep saying it over and over again. If I have to say it until the day that God takes me home or, or the, the, the day that I go home, because I'm not going to die of sickness. I refuse to. Genesis 1 26. Let us make man in our image. But let them have dominion here on the earth, over the earth, over the over the fowl, over the animals, over the plant. He gave us dominion. Let them rule earth like I rule heaven. He made us in his image, beloved, because he loves us so much. And that's why this message is called, is titled, 
when it seems like God doesn't care. See, it may seem like it to people, it may even look like it, but that is so wrong. Of course God cares. He didn't do that. He's not sitting up in heaven pulling strings. Okay, I'll make this person have a car accident. I, I'll do this. And you know, most of the time, even people who don't believe in God, they'll say, well, why your God do this? Well, why did God do that? I'm like, wait a minute, you're an atheist. You don't even believe in God. So what do you mean? You don't believe in it, but you want to blame him when something comes. And these Christians, so many teaching this. That's why people don't, a lot of people don't want to come to God. Come to Jesus Christ because I figure, well, see, if he's in, uh, responsible for every rape, every murder, every robbery, every abortion, every every evil thing in this world, in this world, I don't want him. I don't want him to be my God. Would you? That's what they're saying. I wouldn't either. I thank God, Lord Father. I thank you that you have opened my eyes. I know the truth. You are good, and you are good all the time. You are blamed. For what Satan does and for what evil men have done. The greed of evil men. And I'm bringing you God's heart today to the best of my ability. In the midst of my grieving, grieving, I have been so low, beloved family. At one point, I wanted to go home too. But see, that's what the enemy wants. He wanted me to feel like that. And you know... I was able to be there with my sister. I remember when we were younger, she said, if I ever get sick, I want you to take care of me. God saw to it that I was there. I had nine days, nine nights with her. I was on the night shift at the hospital, and I'd be there from about 7 in the evening till 9, 10 the next day, and we talked, and I prayed a lot. Of, first, she had the tube down her throat. Anyway, but she got that taken out, and we got a chance to pray, to talk, and, you know, read scriptures to her. And like I say, made sure that she acknowledged Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. So I know where she is. She's with the Lord. And I, oh, that's one of the best things I could do is to be there by her side to help her and make sure, lead her to make sure that she was in the arms of the Lord. And my daughter, Pamela, well, she was a mighty pastor, a mighty woman of God. And she had been covering me. You know, we cover each other in prayer. We fasted together. We fasted 21 days together with just water and, and, and cranberry and juice, camp cranberry juice. And, um, and we fasted three days, no food, no water, different times, you know. And we prayed and we would worship. I mean, she's in Africa and Nigeria. But we did it over WhatsApp, um, Messenger, Skype, you know. I mean, we did because I did not have a prayer partner like that mm -hmm. here in Taiwan. I you know I do have uh, another prayer partner in the morning that I use, but that I pray with. But this prayer relationship we had, it's like sometimes I'm the I'm the minister. Sometimes she is. We, I mean, it was someone that iron sharpened iron. I, I could, I could lay down the motherhood and just say, hey, no, you be pastor. Mighty, mighty woman of God. And she she died on her way home from preaching the gospel. I got a chance to hear her voice. I called and um, I, we couldn't hear each other very good. It was loud. She was on the road and, and I remember getting a little irritated and, and because I couldn't hear her, she couldn't hear me. And I said, okay, well, you know, um, she said, mother, mother, I'm getting ready to get in the car. And I said, okay, well, we'll talk later. And you know, I'm filled with the grief of just losing my sister. So I didn't think to put do it to, to, to pray a cover and prayer like we normally do, cover her before she get in that car. And it was so rushed. Little did I know that she was gonna be getting in that car, driving to her death. Satan sneaked in and snatched her life. It was not her time to go. God did not do that. She had so much more to do. But see, the enemy lurks around looking whom he can devour, steal, kill, and destroy. And he waits for a weak moment. He's not worried about those people that's outside the church that don't believe in God, that don't believe in Jesus Christ. He's not worried about them. And he's not worried about the Christians, the ones who go to church, living an unsaved life, sleeping around with whom, whenever they feel like it, 
um, lying, stealing, cheating, and everything else you can think of, you know, drugs, whatever, pornography. But going to church like nothing is wrong. So he's not worried about that. He's not worried about them because he got them. And some are foolish enough to think that because they know Jesus is the Son of God and they know God is real, they believe in God, they believe in Jesus, they figure they're going to be with the Lord heaven in time when die, when they die. Well, let me tell you something, beloved. So the devil and the demons believe in God and Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, they believe more, deeper than most Christians. They are terrified. They tremble in fear of him. But a lot of Christians, they have no fear of God. That's the problem. There's no fear of God. When I say fear, I don't mean like, oh, I'm scared of him. No, I mean, you know, like when your parent, my mother would say, I want you home at 12 o'clock. I don't mean 1201. I don't mean, I, I don't mean 1202. I mean 12 o'clock. I had the fear, like, I got to be home at 12 o'clock. Not, I didn't, not because I thought my mother would kill me or anything. It was that reverential fear, that respect that I had for her. I'm going to be home at 12. No, I could be home at 11.55, 11.59, but I could not be home at 12.01. That, you know, and then the Bible was this, when they put fear, when you look at it, it means to revere, respect, be in awe. Not like you just, no, I'm scared, you're scared of God. You can't go talk to him because you're scared. No, 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 no. That's not talking about, I mean, because he's so holy. Because I tell you, in the Bible, you read with some of them, they came in his presence and they fell till they fell on their face like they were dead. They just fainted. Or they fall down. They fall on his face because he's holy. He is holiness. He is righteousness. He is so pure that if he comes in, in your presence, you will, you will just feel all the, the wrong and the filthy evil that you do. Not by him convicting you, it's because his presence is so pure and so holy and so righteous and so loving. But you know what? Even out of all that, he looks at you with eyes of piercing love. He loves you, beloved. He loves us. He hates our sin, but he loves us. That's why he sent Jesus, his son, to restore what man lost. Man didn't lose a religion. There was no Christian. There was no uh, uh, Hebrew, uh, uh, Jews and, and uh, Buddhists and Muslim. There was no need for it. There weren't even pastors. It was man and God. Man lost a, rela- a personal relationship with God. And they lost the indwelling Holy Spirit. When the Lord blew breath, he put his spirit into him. You know, that's why when he came back, what did he do? He blew on his disciples and said, Receive. Have again the Holy Spirit. He brought the, 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 the governor of the kingdom of God, which is the Holy Spirit. And, the, and he brought the kingdom of God back. He's, the kingdom of God is at hand. The, king, the kingdom of God kingdom is in us. Dwells in us. And the Holy Spirit is the governor, the most important person on this earth. The Holy Spirit. Does God care? Yes, he cares. When man failed him, what did he do? The first thing he did, he had to kill an animal and take the skin to cover the, the nakedness of Adam and Eve when, when before they never even thought about being naked. See, which represents blood being shed to cover our sins. That was the first bloodshed. The animal that God had to kill in their garden to cover, make skins to cover their body. And from that day on, there had to be bloodshed. There had to be something, Had someone had to die to pay for sin. God is righteous. He's holy. Do you know, in one year, I think it was like, was it 100? 250, I think 250,000 lambs or perfect goats or whatever would have to die a year for Passover. It was like um, 10 people per one lamb. It was all 
dress rehearsal and representing Jesus coming, the perfect Lamb of God. One Lamb that had to die one time and covered our sins. He not only paid for our sins, He paid for our sickness and diseases. He paid for that. Why would God put something on you that His Son paid for? He did not give my sister cancer. He's not a God, is not a murderer. God is innocent. Oh, yeah, in the Old Testament, God put leprosy on someone. He opened up the earth and swallowed thousands of the ones that had walked away from him. And when Moses was up on the mountain getting the Ten Commandments, and, and they started worship, made a gold, golden calf and having orgies all just committing abominations and he opened the earth and swallowed them up the, the couple that uh, that um, there was another couple that died the Holy Spirit they, when they were supposed to the Christians were I won't say Christian because they weren't called Christians then the, of the people of the way they were called of the way Jesus was called the way and they were called of the way as a matter of fact Christian, it's been, the word Christian is written way in the New Testament one time. But of the way, the way is all through the Bible. Anyway, they, and people would sell their property and all put it together and they would help each other like the church used to do. I mean, they would, if somebody was in a bind, they would give everybody evenly. And you, most of the time, most people can't go to church and get any help anymore. Like they used to, not the way it used to be. But this particular, this couple, they decided, this, they're selling their property, but they decided to keep some back. Now, they do better, they would have done better not to sell it at all. But they lied, and they lied to the Holy Spirit. You know, sinning against the Holy Spirit, that's the unforgivable sin. Anyway, they were both, I mean, they were killed. They dropped dead right there. Right there. But you know, Jesus came and took everything upon himself. He became our curse. He took all our sickness and diseases. He took upon all our sins and paid for our sins. He went to hell for us. He defeated death for us. He took the keys of death from Satan. He took captivity captive. He did all that for us. And then he came back and took his life back again so that he could leave and be at the right hand of the Father interceding for us now. Now, why would God go through all of that with his son to make this happen, turn around and put sickness on people, allow people to get raped, allow people to get murdered? That's people not taking the responsibility of themselves and them letting Satan escape. We have one enemy, and that's Satan. God is not your enemy. He's your only hope. He's your hope, baby. He's a good God. He's a good God. He loves you. He loves us. And this, the reason I'm making this message, I mean, I didn't think I could do this. I've been hurting so. I mean, I've been in deep, deep, deep sorrow and mourning. And then there's some things that, that my son was going through that people aren't doing right by him. And I'm here just so much. But I just got tired of people blaming my, our holy, almighty, perfect, sinless, righteous, loving, merciful, gracious God. Blaming him. And think they're being holy. Think they're being spiritual. See, that's that. That's religion. Religion is death. Religion will kill you. That's religion. That's that's not godly. And hey, Jesus was not religious. Paul and Peter, they were not religious. You know, one of, one of the root words to religion, I'm told, is to search. Well, when you have a relationship with God, you found. You don't have to search. And you think about it. Most of the 
the deaths around in this world has been because of religion. A lot of the wars have been fought because of religion. God is not religion. He did not give man religion. Man did not fall from religion. He fell from dominion and he lost and fell from the personal relationship, intimate relationship with God. And I know maybe some of you are getting upset with me. I'm sorry about that. But I'm here. I'm, resp I, I, I'm responsible to him to give you his heart and his mind. But baby, don't just believe me. Get in the word of God. Stop believing that man, that woman that you sit in your church, that you don't open your Bible. You just believe what they tell you, what they say. What if they didn't really study the Bible? What if they don't know? And you're saying amen and going and repeating what they say because you're too lazy to get in the Bible yourself. Or you're too trusting, whatever. I'm not trying to get on your case. I'm just, somebody did this to me and made me get, despite me to get in the word for myself. I got in the word to try to prove them wrong about something. And I found out they were right. But he said, if I got you in the word of God, I've done my job. There's so many men and women now in the church that are liars, that are a lot of pimps, people that are all about money, got prophets that charge, prophets, so-called prophets that charge you. A lot of pastors, they're like, they're like, uh, I've in, been in entertainment business for a long time. They're like celebrities. They're like stars. They got their bodyguards and, and they got their groupies and, you know, you got to set me up in this uh, five star hotel. I got to eat at the finest restaurant. You got to pay this. You got to do all this for them to come teach the word of God. You know what? They can't be afraid of God. They have no fear of God. They have no reverential fear of God. Because if they did, they would know that they <laughs> that they could be in big trouble. And so many people they're worshiping their pastors in that building. That building is not the church. Baby, you're the church. I'm the church. The Bible says, God says, how can you think you can build me a house with, with man, made of hands? We are the temple of God. We house the Holy Spirit. We are a spirit. We have a soul. And we live in a body. And when we came to Jesus Christ, we got a new mind. And we got, we got that spirit. We were born with sinful spirit. Because, I mean, we're born in sin. Man sinned. But then when we came to Jesus, we got the new spirit, the same spirit that moved over the water and told the water to stop covering the earth. That same spirit, when he said, let there be light, light was. That same spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead is in us. Your spirit, my spirit is just as holy as Jesus Christ's spirit and just as powerful. Why? Because it is his spirit. It's the spirit of the Father and the Son, the same spirit. And you know, and we got to stop doing this. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come, Father. Why are we saying, Holy Spirit, come? The Holy Spirit lives in you, in me. He's saying, I'm here. We're looking up and out. We look within. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. Those of you who've given, who come to the Lord. You have His Spirit. You don't have to look out. And, and, and when you have the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, goodness, you know, faithfulness, uh, patience, perseverance. So you have all of that stuff inside of you. Why are we praying, asking God to give it out here? And he said, baby, I gave it to you. Look in. And submit to the, to, to the, the urging of the Holy Spirit. Because see, he will guide you. He will not drive you. And what I mean by drive you, I know most of you know, but here for in Asia, you like taking a stick, you take a goat, like, get in there, get, come on, go, go. You have, you have to do a goat like that. But a sheep, you just have to go, ee, 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 whatever sound you make, and they will follow you. He's not going to drive you, but he will guide you. You know, so I had someone say, why didn't God, I don't know, what. Well, then why don't God just make me do right? See, that's somebody who doesn't want to take responsibility for their own actions. And if God did control you, they say, well, he controls, well, he, he, he makes me do everything. He loved us so much. He gave us free will. He gave us 
part of him. Like, you rule. You do like me, baby. You rule. You rule that earth. You know what? And what he said, when he says something, is a commandment. We will rule here before we, we all leave. I know everybody thinks they're going to fly away ahead of time. <laughs> but read the word of God. God does not tell you to do something and then say, okay, you guys blew it. It's not going to be done. We will have to complete what God told us to do before we will leave this earth. You have to believe me and get in the word of God. It's in, the, it's in the word of God. Get away from traditions and man's superstition. And I know um, and I know a lot of people are not going to uh, agree with me, but that's okay. I, a lot of people, a lot of preaching, I don't agree with every, everything. And I don't know everything. I'm not perfect. But I am giving you perfectly what, what I believe God has given me and what he's shown me. That's the only thing I can do and what I've learned and studied. I, you know, and I didn't always think like this. I was taught the same way and believing the same thing. I have heard myself, remember myself saying, Satan can't do nothing but what he, he had to get on his bended knee and beg God, ask, can he do this? And God said, okay, well, you can do this, but you can't do that. I said that because that's what I was taught. But when I got in the word and I got with it and find out myself, I was ashamed of myself. That is an abomination. That is Satan. Like, like putting a slap in God's face and he's laughing because he's in it. He's getting away with it and people are blaming God while the real enemy is sitting there laughing at you. And then there are other people that just want to blame God. They don't want to take responsibility, like I said, or their poor decisions. God doesn't make retarded babies. He doesn't give you Down syndrome babies. He don't make your baby born with no arms and no legs. I don't care what you say. God doesn't do that. He did not do that. Everything he made was good. And none of that stuff started happening until all this medi medication and, uh, and man's greed. And there was a, one man in the Bible that I know that this was lame before. And that was for a reason to, um, for God's power to be shown. But I'm just, I don't want to try to stay focused here. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. Did Jesus murder someone? Did Jesus um, give somebody cancer? Did Jesus uh, cause somebody, have somebody have a, a, a deformed baby? No, Jesus raised the dead. The widow who her, had lost her, her only son, he walked up, put his hand on the cast it, Brought his son back to life and gave him back to him. He cleansed lepers. You know, but they were going to die. He he opened up blind eyes. He, he made lame legs walk. He said, I only do what I see my father do. Because see, the Old Testament is, was something different. Like I said, Jesus came 4,000 years later. However many thousand years. It is to make things right for God. God had a plan. God said... My children have really done wrong. But you know what? I'm not leaving them to the enemy. I'm going to save them. I'm going to give them another way. But he had to do it legally. Jesus had to come be born. He had to come born of a woman. Because see, a spirit here without a human body is illegal. And I go back to Jeremiah. Was it Jeremiah 9, 6, something like this? You say, unto us a child is born. And a son is given. Well, Jesus was a man child, was a child, Mary's child. But the son that was given was the Christ. You see, the child was born. But the son, the Christ, was given. Jesus, the man child, the body, the dirt body, Jesus made the, the Christ, the son of God, legal on earth. See, that's why demons look for a body they can take over. See? They need a body. If they're illegal without on here on their own, and they have no power. What they need a body to do what they what they what they want to do. They, they say, a child, a, a child was born, a son was given. Read that. Read, go ahead and read it. Christ is the Son of God. Jesus is the son of man. That's why he referred to himself sometimes as son of man. 
sometimes son of God. But the son of God could do nothing on this earth if it wasn't done through the son of man. It had to be done with human ability. In human flesh, he was just like he, it, he did not use his supernatural body, his, his 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 deity, his godness. No, because it would have been illegal. It had to be paid by a man made of dirt, a dirt body. And Jesus did that for us because his father wanted him to. He obeyed his father unto death. They who love me obey my commandments. If you love me and obey my commandments, then my Father and I will love you. Jesus, when he came, was God's unconditional love. If he paid pay for your sickness and diseases and your sins and, and, and took the curse upon himself, he can't do any more for you. So when you reject him or you ignore him, you rejected or ignored God's unconditional love. So you can't say, Oh, I have his unconditional love. If you don't have Jesus, if you reject it, you don't have it. Jesus is God's unconditional love because he's already, he can't do anything more, any more for you than that. He loves you, beloved. He loves me. He loves you. He's innocent. God is innocent. God is innocent. We are responsible for this earth. We're not going to help him rule heaven. He does not need us to help him rule heaven. He's been doing fine without us. As a matter of fact, if he had depend on, uh, depend on us to protect and rule heaven, he would have been kicked out of heaven a long time ago. I, I, that's just the truth. And be, beloved, we've got to become more than Christians. You've got to become ambassadors. Christians can have their own opinion. A lot of people call themselves Christians and, and doing whatever they want to do. But an ambassador, you represent your country. You don't have your own opinion. You say, well, my government's views on this subject is, and you give the government's views. And if you misrepresent your, your, your government, your country, you are recalled. But just, just being a Christian, you can do all that stuff and still go to church and sit up there and hallelujah, praise the Lord. And, you know, Living in pornography. Doing everything that you know is wrong. But then going and laying your hands on people praying for them in the church. That's an about you, you, are, you, you are not afraid of God if you do that. Because you, are, you don't care about those people because they'll probably be worse off. They will be, be worse off of you putting your hands on the laying hands praying. Putting that, that sin, that demonic stuff in you and them. And you'll be worse off too. I'm not talking to everybody, but I know there's somebody that God is talking to. And people, don't, don't be so quick. Don't let people just come lay hands on you. <laughs> don't just let anybody come lay hands on you. And, and don't let anybody come tell you, thus saith the Lord. It's a lot of people do it for show. You know, they want to be, they, you know, it's for uh, uh, popularity. You know, a bit more here, God then my shoe <laughs> and I know my shoe does not hear God <laughs> I just go wherever he leads me anyway the main thing is just give God your heart and love him trust him see because when you walk away from God and you don't trust him the enemy has you <laughs> He's your protection. He's your high tower. He's your he's your defender. He's your protector. He's your mother, your father, your your God, your food and your clothing. And if you walk away from him, or if you start trusting him and blaming him, the enemy, that old dragon, who should be under your foot because Jesus put him there. Jesus did everything to him. He made a spectacle of him. He's like in the in the old days when they would take a king when they would catch him captive take him captive. They would strip him naked and tie him to a chariot and pull him, pull him down the street. They would cut his thumbs off and cut his toes off to show that this man, you'll never have to fear him again because without thumbs, he can't hold a sword and without his big toes, he can't run. That's what Jesus did to Satan. He made a spectacle of him. And we're too busy running around scared of Satan. Whoa. 
don't you don't know what God's gonna do. He moving mysterious words. You don't know why God do that, but you know what I think Satan's gonna do. He is a defeated foe. He has Jesus gave you the victory. He gave me the victory. What you gonna do with it? You gonna give it back? All you have to do is hold on to it. You don't have to fight for it. Jesus already fought for it. You just got to stand your ground and hold your place. You are to be the light in this world until the light of the world comes back. You are to be the salt in this earth until the salt of the earth comes back. You know, like sometimes you're standing in line and say, can you hold my, can you hold my space till I come back? That's what we're supposed to do for Jesus. Hold his space till he comes back. And he wouldn't do that without giving us the power because he loves us. Put your blame where it belongs. Your adversary, the enemy, Satan, that old dragon. And on the evils of men, the greed. It's the love of money that's most... You know, the love of money causes even more even more havoc than Satan. People are having other people killed because of love of money. All kind of things are the love of money. They are poisoning people for the love of money on purpose. Money. Anyway. I'm so glad I made this video because I'm feeling so much better. I didn't think I could do it. I mean, and I've been fighting this really bad cold, but look, I haven't sneezed at all. I mean, and I was recording, and I, I had, anyway, it got cut off. Someone, it was, it was lost twice. I said, I'm not going to give up because people have to know God is innocent. And when it seems like God doesn't care, use your good sense. And get in the word of God and know God cares. If he didn't care, he wouldn't have done what he did for you. And he didn't have to make you. He didn't need you. He don't need, he didn't need me. He wanted us. He wanted to, his children to be in his image. Not like the angels where their job, they worship him. They bow before him, bow in, and all day long they praise him. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. All day long. But he, did, he gave us the choice. A lot of us... The, don't even say it one time a day, let alone all day, 24-7. He said, my children will choose me. You got the right to choose him or not choose him, to love him or not love him. He'll give you, like I said, he will give you your free will all the way to hell if that's what you, if, that, if, if that's where you want to go and that's what you want to do. He's not going to take that free will from you because he can't. He's a man of his word. He is of his word. Your word is your bond. I was telling a, a family member, and when you don't keep your word, that means you, you, you lie. And they proceeded to tell me how that's not a lie. A lie is when you do something, uh, you make up something. I'm like, no, if you say you're going to do something and you just don't do it, you lied. The same as you tell someone, um, I'll, 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 you know, I'll be there in five minutes. When you know you're 35, 40 minutes away, you lied. I don't, you can't dress it up. People see, that's what people want to dress up thing. But in, in God's eye, that is a lie. Now, things happen if you can't get there. You call, listen, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to be late. I mean, so, you know, you, you gave your word, but you, could, you couldn't. you could Something happened, and you couldn't do it. But just say intentionally, yeah, I'll be there knowing you're not. Or you just don't come back. You got you got caught up in a conversation. That's what I told me. And they, just, and, and they just was talking to somebody they hadn't seen in a long time and just didn't come back to do what they was to meet me. It's like, well, you lied to me because I was waiting. But they got upset. They didn't see it as a lie. And I could see the I could see the demon all in the eyes. You see, they don't want to hear the truth. Jesus is the truth. And they, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, a lie is a lie. Remember that when you tell someone, "Oh yeah, I'll be there in ten minutes," and you know you haven't even left your house. You tell them what it whatever it takes to keep them appeased, keep them happy, to, 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 to you get there. You know you you don't want to face it. Start being honest. That's a lie. Okay. You, maybe you didn't know before, but now you do. I just go where he leads me. But love God because he loves you. And remember, he wouldn't do anything to hurt you. All things happen for the good of those. They say all things happen for good. For the good of those who love God and who are trusting God. 
He's not going to take your heart. You got to give it to him. How would you? I wouldn't want my son, mother. I love you, mother. I love you, mom. I, I will do whatever you say. I love you. You know, because you have no choice. No, but I want him. He comes to me and says, Mom, you know what? I love you. You know, what, what you want me to do? I mean, his decision. I mean, that makes you feel good. I mean, God is our parent. He's, a, he's the first parent. That's why there is mother and father. Because they're both in him. But he's so big and so much, he put part of the mother part in the female and the father part in the male. He didn't just make it up. It came from him. Okay. And on that note, I want to say, tell you, I love you. And please pray for me. I'm going through so much right now. My heart breaks at my loss. But you know what? One, I never said, why did you do this, God? Why did you let this happen? No, I never did. I will say, I said one thing. When I, I just got a, a, a text on, on Facebook, someone who didn't know me that well. I will thank God for, for, for him. Jonathan, I think his name, I can't remember it right now. I think it was Jonathan. And he said, I just want to let you know, maybe, I think maybe you don't know that Pamela died in a car accident. I was like, no, 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 God, no, no, God. Did, let this not be. Let this not be true. I did say that. But not like, oh, God, you didn't do that. I didn't say that. It's like, let this not be true. I was hoping and praying that it was wrong information. And when they told me that my sister had three days to live, I got up. The Lord put on my heart and woke me up. And I called and my brother-in-law. That's what the doctors had said. She had three days to live and she wouldn't wake up. I got on my knees and I started praying, Lord, this can't be. Because I got to make sure she's going to be with you. Uh, she's got to, and I said, because she would wake up praying and, and interceding the spirit. When I got there, they said, when I got there, she was awake. They said, this doctor gave a wrong diagnosis. God changed things, baby. She was awake. And she had, like I said, we had nine days together. Enough to, to where I know that I know that Jesus was her Lord and Savior. But God did that because he loved her. He loved, he, it's his will that none should perish. It's in the word of God. So you know his will is not being done. Because many are perishing. And, oh, by the way, for those who say nothing can happen unless God does it or allow it, well, if that's true, then he allowed me to give you this message and to say what I'm saying. So he did it. So, I mean, he wants you to hear, right? <laughs> I could not say what I'm saying if God didn't allow it. If that's what you think, only thing can happen if God allow it or God does it. You got free will. I got free will. Everybody on this planet, on this earth, has free will. Every human. And then you got an adversary that's coming in, whispering these lies and things. Anyway, just remember, God is good. God loves you. And uh, thank you for listening to my heart, opening up to you. I'm just being open and personal with you. So that when someone else, when you lose someone, you know that you can get through if, if you know they didn't know the Lord Jesus, they didn't know God, then that's when you, that's when to be really sad because you won't, you won't see them again. I'm going to see them again. And that you can have, take heart to know that God cares for you. It may seem like it sometimes that he doesn't because of, of the teaching that God does. Is, you know, like he's up there pulling string, playing chess with us. That's, that's bad teaching. God cares all the time. He loves you. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all. And on that note, let me pray. Thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for giving me this position, to, to the, the opportunity to share your heart. I mean, it's scary because I have to be real and serious, not given my ideas. Thank you, Father, for trusting me. And I do my very best, Lord, and if there any time I get into myself, forgive me and rebuke me and forgive me in the name of your son, Jesus, I pray. Because you have made me shepherd over these people that are watching. Thank you, Father. I love you so much. I love you so much. In Jesus' name, now let me pray for you. 
In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that you know how good God is and that God loves you. And there's someone who's been blaming God and angry with him. Now you're convicted. You know that God is innocent right now. Let me agree with you. Tell God you're sorry. Tell him, I'm, I, 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 I'm sorry that I accused you. You're innocent. He's uh, Jesus already paid for that sin, baby. It's paid for. Jesus paid for every sin when he died one time. Few, past, present, and future. Oh, yes, and people don't want to hear that, but baby, he's not coming to die again. You better hope he did because he's only died one time for sins. He's not going to die again for sins. Right now, just come on, agree. Give God his due, give his glory. Tell God, Lord, I'm sorry. I know you're innocent. It's okay. You know, that's not the unforgivable sin. He forgives you for that. And believe that he loves you. He wants the best for you. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the hearts to be mended. For all of those that have lost loved ones like I have lost loved ones. For those that, have, that are sick or maybe lost a leg or an arm or some, in surgery or, some, or, or, or lost an eye or their eyesight. And you're blaming God. You're thinking, you're thinking God did this to you. And it's not your fault. It's because of the bad teaching that you've been taught. But I'm here giving you the, I'm giving you the truth. God cares and he's innocent. He didn't do it to you, baby. And he's the only one that can fix it through his son, Jesus. Don't push the very one out who can fix it for you. He loves you. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. I release the healing power of God. I release healing to live in broken hearts, be amended. Restoration, your relationships with God being restored. Relationship with others being restored. Oh, in the name of the Christ Jesus, I release the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Christ Jesus. Be blessed. Be blessed. Oh, beloved. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for being here. And I pray and I hope that you were blessed. I know I can't please everybody, even if, but if it's one person that heard the heart of God that was touched, then I've done my job. Don't forget, if you want to send me an email, I'm at heart, H-E-A-R-T, the number two, heart, H-E-A-R-T, oh, excuse me, that's right, I forgot, Z-L for Zarina London, Z-L dot h-e-a-r-t heart the number two heart at gmail.com z-l dot heart number two heart at gmail.com also like to remind you we don't ask for tithes and offering offerings but I do ask you to pass the YouTube link and to subscribe to the YouTube channel Help me help others. Help me bring the church to those that aren't going to church, can't go to church, or just don't want to go to church. The, to bring the church. And the, we are the church the, the, to bring the gospel. You know, because he said, the Lord said, go. It's not like, hey, come at my church. I mean, going to church is great. Fine, don't, great. Don't, don't get me wrong. But here, for those of you who are going to church, here's something extra for you. For those who won't, here's a church for you, right here. International, all around the world. If you got YouTube, you can come to this church. Okay? Well, God bless you, and God keep you till we meet again, and I'll keep you covered in prayer. Cover me in prayer. we got to cover each other in prayer to protect us, each other from the enemy. I'll be pre praying for you. Okay? In the meantime, here's some sugar. Mm, sugar, sugar, sugar. And here, mm, here's some sugar from God. Until we meet again by the grace of God. God cares for you. God loves you. And guess what? So do I. Bye-bye.